What is up guys, from Seed to Stone here, and in this episode I'll be showing you my CBD cream and cheese grow from start to finish. I'll cover every aspect of this grow from germination, feeding, training, harvesting, curing, and finally we'll see what this grow weighed up as a whole. This will be my first start to finish grow guide that all takes place in a single episode, so I hope you guys enjoy this one. Before we get into today's video, I'd like to thank our sponsor Seedsman Seed Bank. Seedsman are one of the most trusted and reliable online seed banks in the world, offering a variety of seeds from over 100 different breeders with detailed characteristics like genetics and THC content for each strain. They have an easy to navigate website with filters tailored to your needs, and they also have collections for beginners and advanced growers with plenty of cultivation info on their blog. For this grow, I decided to grow CBD cream and cheese. I've heard great things about this strain and it's said to have a 1 to 1 ratio of CBD and THC. The first thing I need to do is germinate my seeds. There are a few different ways you can do this, however I prefer the paper towel method. First I place my seeds in a glass of water for 18 to 24 hours, making sure to keep the jar in a dark and warm space. After 18 hours, my seeds have sunk to the bottom of the jar, which indicates they are ready to roll. Next I grab some paper towels and pour out the seeds. It's important to not drown the seeds in water, but just moisten the towels evenly. I'll be checking the paper towels every 4 to 8 hours to ensure it stays nice and moist. You don't want this to dry out. Similar to the first step, I'm keeping the seeds in a dark and warm space while they finish germinating. After 2 days, my seeds have all sprouted tap roots, and I know they're ready to plant when the tap roots are approximately 3 quarters to an inch long. I first grab a few starter pots filled with my medium of choice, which is cocoa core mixed with some perlite in a 70 to 30 ratio. Using my finger, I create a small hole and I place in the seeds tap roots down. I gently cover the seeds with a small bit of cocoa and moisten the medium with some water that's been pH to 6.1. Young cannabis plants love high humidity, so I'm putting these seeds into a tent which is equipped with a humidifier. For early veg, I aim for 70% RH. If you don't have a humidifier, you can always take a plastic cup or a bottle and place it over the seed to keep the humidity up. A few days later, both my plants sprouted up from the medium. Now I won't be feeding any nutrients for the first week of life. At a young age, cannabis plants can burn easily with excessive nutrients, and you'd be surprised how well they'll do with nothing added even in a medium such as cocoa core. As the plants get bigger, I'll need to start feeding them. For this grow, I went with General Hydroponics Flora Trio with the addition of CalMag. I'll have these newts and every product that I use linked in the video's description. When the plants are 7 days old, I'll feed them 2 milliliters of CalMag, 1 milliliter of Micro, 1 milliliter of Grow, and 0.5 milliliters of Bloom. Between weeks 2 and 4, I'm going to be feeding 2 milliliters of CalMag, 2.5 milliliters of Micro, 2.5 milliliters of Grow, and 1 milliliter of Bloom. For weeks 5 through 6, during the transition, I feed 2 milliliters of CalMag, 2 milliliters of Micro, 1 milliliter of Grow, and 2 milliliters of Bloom. During early to mid flower, I feed 2 milliliters of CalMag, 2 milliliters of Micro, 0.5 milliliters of Grow, and 2 milliliters of Bloom. And in late flower, I'll feed only 2 milliliters of Micro and 4 milliliters of bloom. For the last two weeks of flower, I'll flush my medium and just use pH balanced water. It's important to note that all of these amounts are per gallon of water used. It's also important to break up the feeds from time to time with a plain watering. To make it easy, you can feed every other watering to reduce the salt buildup that is known with synthetic nutrients like the Flora Trio. pH is also really important too. For cocoa, anywhere between 5.5 to 6.5 is okay, with 5.7 to 6.1 being optimal. For soil, it's a little bit different with the range being between 6.0 and 6.8. You should pH your feed slightly different each time as the plants will uptake certain nutrients at different pH levels. Plants are now 2 weeks old and they're finally ready to get transplanted into their final pots. I'm using 5 gallon talls for these two. While the plants are still young, I'm watering once every 2-3 to three days when the medium starts to dry out. Cocoa core is technically a hydroponic medium, so it's hard to overwater, but it is still easy to overfeed. One of the benefits to using cocoa is the ease of flushing when a toxicity or lockout does occur. I'll be letting these girls be for the next week while they get adjusted to their new home and bounce back from the transplant shock. So far, they're looking looking great and loving life.
It's now week three and I can finally start training these two. My favorite method is low stress training, which exposes lower growth sites and in turn creates more tops on your plant without stunning it. This is also a very effective way of maintaining a nice and even canopy. Training is easy, but does take some time and a whole lot of patience. To start, I drill a hole at the side of my pot and I bend over the main stem and secure it down with some wire tie. As the plants get bigger, I'll be bending this main stalk in a circular shape around the pot while pulling down the new shoots, trying to keep everything as even as possible. You'll be surprised at how fast the plants can blow up. Even after a week, these two have exploded with new growth and are now creating multiple tops which will eventually become colas later on in flower. Every two to three days when watering, I'm spending some time with these two working on their canopy. I haven't yet defoliated anything, just simply moving branches and trying to build a good base for my plant before I send it into flower. At week 6, I'm happy with how my plants are looking and now it's time to get flower underway. Now photo periods need a light schedule change in order to induce flowering, specifically 12 hours of light and 12 hours of darkness. I'll be using a plug timer that is scheduled to come on at 9am and shut off at 9pm. Now when you set your lights on and off times is up to you. If you're struggling with heat issues, I'd suggest running your lights during the night time when the temps are lower. I'm also dropping down my light as cannabis plants require more intensity during flower. Mars Hydro recommends hanging the SP250 at 24 inches above the canopy for early bloom. Within a week, I've started to notice pistils popping from their nodes, which is a clear indication that these two are indeed female plants. Now that they've transitioned, I'll be removing the humidifier and adding in a dehumidifier. For flower, I want 50% and under. While in their first week of flower, I'll be applying another training method, which is called lowly popping. Lowly popping is the process of removing the lower branches and leaves, which in turn forces the plant to put its energy into its upper growth. This is a pretty important step as the lower growth will most likely produce small all larfy buds that don't tend to ripen up by the time the plant is ready to harvest. Not only a week later, bud sites are popping up and trichomes are being produced on their sugar leaves. I'm a big fan of this strain so far. It's very resilient to nutrients, easy to grow, and so far is stacking very nicely. The work put into these two and veg is really starting to show as the canopy fills with nice sized colas throughout. During week six of flower, I begin the flushing process. Now flushing is something everyone tends to debate, but in my opinion, when using synthetic nutrients, it is a must. Flushing is super simple to do. In the last two weeks, of flour, just feed nothing but pH balanced water, no more nutrients. This will break up the nutrients in the medium and it will allow the plant to eat what it already stored inside of its leaves. During this time, you'll see fan leaves start to fade out and turn yellow. This is 100% normal and a sign of a successful flush. Now these plants bulked up quite a bit. I debated installing a scrog net earlier in flower, but decided against it. But now I have branches flopping over because they're not strong enough to support the weight of the buds. To fix this issue, I use some hemp twine and tied up each cola to a single line that's running across the length of my tent. At week 8 in flower, it was time to start checking the trichomes. Now previously I used a jeweler's loop, but this time around I bought a cheap USB microscope. Now what this does is it allows me to see the trichomes close up. Don't harvest based on pistol color, harvest based on trichome color. When the trichomes are all milky, the plant is at its most potent state for THCA, and when they begin to amber, CBDA levels begin to increase. I personally like a blend of 70% milky and 30% amber for anything indica or CBD related. I'm also making sure to check the tops and bottoms of my plants. Sure enough, the plants are ready to harvest during their 8th week in flower. To begin my harvest, I first chop the plant as a whole at its base. Using a pair of garden loppers, I snip the main stem where it meets the medium. Once cut, I released the lines attached to my colas and then I hung the plants upside down. I'm using my small 6 inch fan to push air around my tent, making sure it's not directly blowing onto the buds themselves. The golden rule of drying is to do it slowly. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to who've ruined their buds by drying too fast. I actually add a humidifier into my lung room to maintain 55% RH throughout the entire process. Even for plants of this size, which aren't that big, they took 12 days to dry. I knew they were done when I could take a branch and bend it between my fingers, listening for a snapping sound without it breaking clean off. Once dried up, I cut the plants down and place them into a plastic tote. Normally
Normally I like a very clean and tight trim job on my buds, but this time around I wasn't as focused on getting them to look perfect because of what I plan to do with most of this bud. You guys will find this out in my next video. Anyways, to start the trimming process, I first remove the fan leaves by hand. The fact that everything is dried out makes this very easy to do. Next I use a pair of garden trimmers to remove the standing fan leaves that don't have trichomes on them. Your scissors will most likely gunk up after a while. Some people save this resin to make scissor hash, I personally just use denatured alcohol to clean my shears. Now that all the butt is trimmed, it's time to jar it all up and begin the curing process. I'm making sure to lightly pack each jar full up to the top. I'm also adding a humidity and temp monitor into each jar so I can have a better idea of what the environment is. As cannabis cures, chlorophyll breaks down and gases are released. If you do not vent these gases and moisture, your buds can either become moldy or will have some funky smells. For the first week, I'll burp one to two times per day, opening the jar for around 15 minutes at a time. For the following 30 days, I'll open it up once per week, and again burping for 15 minutes. After that, they're good to go and I'll add in a Bravita 62 pack for long term storage. Cannabis can be stored for a very long time as long as the environment is right. Make sure to keep them in a cool environment, shaded from any light. If you notice your jars start to get an earthy hay smell, it means your buds need more dry time. Remove them for an hour or so while they dry further and then put them back into the jars. And that's it. That's my CBD cream and cheese grow from start to finish. These two ended up weighing up at 237.6 grams combined, not including any lard for trim. We managed to pull one gram per watt with this grow using the Mars SP250. Overall, I'd say it's a great budget friendly LED that can take a grow from start to finish. I'd say its strengths were shown in veg with its weaknesses showing in flower. It's a white light spectrum with more of a focus on the blues, which plants really seem to love in veg. However, it's slightly lacking on the reds, which plants tend to like when bulking up those buds. The nugs themselves have a beautiful dark green hue with orange accents from their pistols. They're nice and dense, fairly frosty, and smell absolutely amazing. I'm in love with this strain and enjoyed this grow completely from start to finish. CBD cream and cheese is very resilient, easy to grow, and shows a lot of potential with bud structure and the way it stacks. This is definitely a strain that I'd grow again. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to press that thumbs up button below. It helps out more than you could possibly imagine. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to let me know. And if you guys want to follow more videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Again, all products used are linked in the video's description. And if you want to support the channel even further, check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash from seed to stone. I'll be seeing you guys next week with another video and season five is right around the corner. Much love and as always guys, happy growing.